Hi everyone, welcome back to Food Feeds. You're watching part 3 video of carbohydrates, wherein I'll be talking about the complex carbohydrates, that is oligosaccharides and polysaccharides. So let's begin. What are complex carbohydrates? So they are the polymers of saccharide units, that is the sugar units, which are linked together by glycosidic bonds. So when we say a term oligosaccharides, we mean that that carbohydrate contains 3 to 10 sugar units and polysaccharide contains more than 10 sugar units. So usually the basic monosaccharide unit will be glucose in many cases, but the structure it forms will be different in different carbohydrates. We all know that complex carbohydrates are the major component of a human diet in our body. This oligosaccharide is present in a combined form that is conjugated form with proteins and lipids which are associated with the cell membranes. And when it is present on the cell surface, the conjugated oligosaccharides will act as an important modulators of cell function. So now let's see what are oligosaccharides. So the, the most common oligosaccharide that we come across is raffinose, stachyose and Verbascose. So here 3, 4, 5 represents the number of monosaccharide units that are present in them. And each of these is composed of glucose, galactose and fructose. So where they are found? They are found in the dried beans, peas, lentils, bran and whole grains. One of the interesting facts that we know about this oligosaccharides is that human digestive enzymes, they do not hydrolyze these Glyco uh, glycosidic bonds but the bacteria within the intestine does it so sometimes because um, of the consumption of over of these oligosaccharides in the diet can cause us the discomfort of platelets. so now let's uh, learn about dextrins which is one of the important oligosaccharide which is composed of entirely sugar units but they are not naturally present in the food. Instead, they are produced commercially and it is used as an additive in food pharmaceuticals as well as nutritional supplements. So how they are made? Usually they are made from the starch, which is hydrolyzed under controlled conditions to produce glucose chain of desired lengths. So based on the length of this dextrin, the application varies. Uh, for example, in case of food industry, 3 to 20 sugar units of dextrin is used for food and drug application. And that is the one of the reasons why we can categorize dextrin into oligosaccharide as well as polysaccharide, depending on the chain length. Dextrins are also listed on product label as maltodextrin, corn syrup solids, hydrolyzed corn starch. So as I mentioned, it has a great application in food industry. So let's see what are the desirable properties and applications of dextrin. So they are used as a thickening agent. They are also used in inhibition of sugar crystallization in confection. It is also used as a fat replacer, crisping agent in food batters and coatings. It is also used as an energy source for infant formula, sports drink, tube feeding, etc. So here the crisping agent is nothing but the firming agent itself. For example, in case of pickle, we use calcium chloride, right? So similarly, uh, in crisping agent in food batters and coatings are also used. It's an alternative term for a uh, firming agent. So uh, when we consume these dextrins, they are easily digested. There is only one exception that is wheat dextrin, which is used as a dietary supplement. Because it consists of non-digestible end, that is beta 1,2 and beta 1,3 glycosidic linkages, uh, it is not digestible. And because it is not a digest, it doesn't have a digestible bond, B dextrin is considered as a soluble fiber. So now let's see about the polysaccharides. It's by definition, all the glycosidic bonding of monosaccharide units, uh, which may be repeated many times, and it forms a higher molecular weight polymers, they are called as polysaccharides. 
So if the structure is composed of a single type of sugar, then it is called as homopolysaccharides. Whereas if it contains two or more different type of sugars, then the structure is termed as heteropolysaccharide. So both of these types, that is homopolysaccharide and heteropolysaccharides, exist in nature. However, uh, homopolysaccharides are of far greater importance nutritionally uh, because of their abundance occurrence in the natural food. So we all know that starch and glycogen are the major storage form of carbohydrates mm -hmm. in plants and animal tissues. So one of the important property that we should be knowing regarding this carbohydrates or saccharides is that how the reducing capacity of them because that will help us to determine how these digestive enzymes work together when hydrolyzing dietary starch. But in food industry, hydrolysis of starch to produce dextrin and smaller saccharides can easily be monitored by the rate of appearance of reducing sugars. So whenever there is a glycosidic bond is hydrolyzed, there is a formation of hemiacetal. So there is a simple test called dextrose equivalent which is used to measure the extent of this hydrolysis. For example, if, if a starch solution has a DE value of 0, that means there is no hydrolysis occurred in that. Whereas if a starch solution has a DE of equivalent to 100, then all the glycosidic bonds present in that solution has been hydrolyzed. So in food industries, food dextins which have a value of 3 to 20 uh, dextrose equivalent is used. So we all know that the most common digestible polysaccharides in plants is starch and it has two forms that is amylose and amylopectin. Both are the polymers of alpha D-glucose. So when we talk about amylose, the molecule is linear and it's unbranched in which the glucose units are attached through alpha 1,4 glycosidic bond. And in water, this amylose chain adopt a helical conformation. So this is the helical uh, structure. So please remember amylose is always has a linear chain. And uh, amylopectin, the second one, this has a branch chain. So though it contains the same uh, basic unit, the difference lies in the structure it forms. So as I said, amylopectin, it is a branch chain polymer and the uh, linkage occurs, branching occurs at alpha 1 comma 4. So here if you see, it's still the, here, it's a linear one. So this is similar to amylose, right? Both amylose and amylopectin, they occur in cereal greens, potatoes, uh, legumes and other vegetables. Amylose contribute around 15 to 20 percent. Whereas amylopectin is more, that is around 80 to 85 percent of the total starch content of the food. Moving on to glycogen. So the structure of glycogen is very similar to amylopectin that is branched, but it is more branched compared to amylopectin. The glycogen is more branched compared to amylopectin. So uh, we all know glycogen is the major form of the stored carbohydrate in animal tissue and most of it is found in the liver and skeletal muscle. The glucose units within this glycogen, they serve as readily source available for the body. We all think that since glycogen is the one which is, uh, which is stored in these muscles right but still when you consume any meat product there is no glycogen that is consumed because the first thing is during uh, the meat and uh, animal processing the glycogen in the muscle will immediately hydrolyze to glucose so which will again convert it into lactic acid so when we consume that any meat product there is no glycogen present in that it's already converted to glucose and then it is already uh, in lactic acid form. So the last one is about the cellulose. So here the cellulose is the major component of cell walls in plants. It is similar to starch like a homo polysaccharide of glucose but the only difference lies in the structure that is here the cellulose has beta 1 comma 4 linkage. 
So we all know that cellulose is also not digested by humans because of the lack of enzyme present to digest it. Uh, so it is defined as dietary fiber and there is no energy source that is provided by cellulose. But there are a few studies that says that the colon has some bacteria which can help to digest the cellulose, but still there is no proper evidence to confirm it. And hence, till then, we are considering cellulose as a dietary fiber and it's not a source of energy. So this was all about a brief note on complex carbohydrates, that is oligosaccharides and polysaccharides. If you haven't watched part one and part two video of carbohydrates, do watch it. It includes monosaccharides and disaccharides and also some structural aspects. So this is overall brief note which is covered in all the three parts. And almost 80 to 90% of the questions will come from this in a competitive exam. These are just the basics of carbohydrates. So in the upcoming videos, I will be covering the nutritional aspects of carbohydrates as well as the metabolism of carbohydrates in future. If you haven't subscribed the channel yet, please do and hit the bell icon so that you will get a notification whenever there is a new video uploaded. Hope to see you all in the next video as well. Thank you.